Hello, everyone. Uh, for our discussion paper, we decided uh, to make a short video, maximum eight minutes. Uh, the discussion paper is about theorizing the open learning model as an educational tool, an open challenge. Uh, and actually, it is an open challenge. Uh, so in the course of this uh, video presentation, we will try to describe the problem that we are still addressing. And hopefully, we can have uh, an interesting conversation with you all. My name is Emanuele Bardone. I have the pleasure to have next to me Daniel Oshiar. And the, sec and the third author is uh, Margus Pedeste, who couldn't be um, with us. So let's get started. First of all, we would like to mention that this is part of uh, an ongoing research. Uh, luckily, we already managed to publish uh, a couple of works uh, on uh, this topic, which is uh, more specifically uh, the open learning model and uh, self-regulation. Uh, these are the two papers uh, that we managed to publish in uh, the educational, in two educational journals. Yep. Yep, British Journal of Educational Technology and Computers and Education. And Education. And you can see also the names of the uh, colleagues that have been uh, involved uh, in this research. But let's now get into the main topic uh, of uh, the discussion paper, which is uh, theorizing. Perhaps uh, we can start from uh, a quote from uh, uh, Terry Anderson, uh, who said, reflecting back on uh, an episode that happened in 2003, he said that he had become obsessed with the notion that uh, there must be some kind of rational law that would uh, help uh, uh, educational practitioners basically decide what kind of tool to use in which context. This is a very interesting way to put it because it seems that for Terry Anderson uh, it's actually very important uh, to theorize in educational technology. But is it uh, always the case in uh, especially in mainstream educational technology or not? Now here we have uh, uh, a few quotes that seem to suggest uh, that uh, we have uh, a problem uh, in educational technology because it seems that the field is under theorized. And here we can mention the work of uh, uh, several uh, colleagues, uh, uh, one of which is uh, by Dennett and Oliver, who uh, back in 2011 said that essentially educational technology seems to be a field of research uh, mostly interested uh, in practical implementation and design uh, and the assumptions that are usually behind uh, the use of technology in education are basically uh, common sense assumptions. Then we have still Oliver that a few uh, years uh, later restated the message saying, saying that uh, we are still adopting or assuming uh, in our uh, pieces of research, a common sense understanding of what technology is and what it can do. And then, interestingly enough, uh, one year ago, there was an empirical paper, a review paper published uh, by you and colleague, in which basically they reviewed uh, something like 500 articles in some of the major uh, ad tech journals. And, uh, well, the result was uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, almost half of the papers uh, that they reviewed uh, did not have any theoretical background. They basically had uh, a theoretical assumptions, and only 35% of those papers uh, were actually engaging theory at some level. Now, uh, what is uh, usually the purpose uh, of uh, theory? Uh, well, there might be several answers to, th to this question, but let's say that as far as we are concerned here, we may think that a theory might be uh, explanatory or a theory can be considered as a number of principles to help us uh, achieve a certain outcome. So in the first case, uh, the theory provides the frames uh, uh, thanks to which we can uh, uh, understand and explain uh, why things are the way they are. Whereas in theory as design, obviously, we try to uh, elaborate and then apply uh, some kind of theoretical principles that would inform uh, uh, how to achieve uh, certain desired outcomes, which in education are usually related to learning. What we did uh, in our case uh, was to take the uh, open learning model as our case in point, our educational technology, and then try to see what kind of theorization we could find in the literature. But before we get into this, perhaps we should uh, tell you something about what the open learning model is. Well, 
so now I would uh, tell you a little bit about open learner models. Usually they uh, present, they represent the knowledge or a skill level of a student, or like let's say their misconceptions in different ways, just uh, with the aim of encouraging, encouraging learners to actively participate in thinking about uh, their learning. So the next thing that I would like to share with you are the modeling technique used in these kind of models. Let's say like in a general way we can call, we can put them in a category of observable nodes and unobservable nodes. Observable nodes are uh, those kind of systems or a model where they analyze the student's activity or the action, the, the observable one, observable actions. And the un unobservable nodes, they uh, basically revolve around the, the inferred nodes from those actions. So the representation style of the OLMs, they also, they have two different styles, uh, what we call them simple and complex. The simple version tend to present competency level of a learner as a subcategory of experts competency, whereas the complex version presents hierarchical knowledge structures. And um, in three cases, characterization of misconception and knowledge and concept maps. So basically, I can say like the simple one is just trying to, in a simple way, show the misconception the level of the skills and other stuff to the students and uh, the complex one trying to, to to make it more more systematic and, and um, uh, the last thing that I would like to share with you is the representation format used in this kind of uh, tools so they have simple uh, in both simple and complex OLMs we have uh, different kind of representation for example graphical textual format and in, in some of them, they're like a combination of both or each one of them, as you can see. I think that this much of background would be enough. I think that it's certainly enough. Yeah. As we said at the beginning, uh, this uh, uh, discussion paper is about theorizing the open learning model. So we needed to have a theory of reference uh, and see how actually these theories uh, was used uh, in the dedicated literature. We decided to use a self-regulation uh, because uh, the open learning model is uh, supposed to be conducive to activities such as planning, self-monitoring, and reflection that are very close to what self-regulation is all uh, about. As I just mentioned, uh, we review a number of papers, uh, and the main criterion that we used uh, was whether or not they were mentioned uh, self-regulation, either indirectly or directly. In the end, we considered uh, 67 papers yep. and uh, in order to assess them uh, to see how actually they use the self-regulation as a theoretical framework we created a, a rubric before I come to describe the rubric uh, we have to specify what do we uh, searched for when it came to self-regulation uh, as a theoretical framework while relying on Zimmerman we were looking for three main components uh, that are actually uh, making the idea of self-regulation. Uh, the first uh, is cognition, the second one is metacognition, and the third one is motivation. We then, as I said before, created a rubric uh, in order to assess each and every uh, paper uh, that we uh, reviewed. Uh, the results uh, uh, were quite staggering because in spite of the fact uh, that uh, most of the papers were actually mentioned in one of these uh, three components, in any case, the papers actually mention uh, all the three components, namely cognition, uh, motivation, and metacognition, which means that essentially uh, the use of self-regulation uh, was at least uh, questionable because self-regulation is a quite established theory, and even when uh, we use uh, uh, Zimmerman's uh, framework, we see that many things are lacking, but all in all, uh, uh, there is a problem with fragmentation. Uh, as I said, uh, in spite of the fact that some of the components were actually mentioned, uh, what turned out to be was that essentially the whole theory was not uh, considered properly. So we come uh, to the end uh, of this uh, uh, short presentation. What are the challenges? Well, first of all, the challenge uh, uh, primarily concerns how to theorize the open learning model. 
So the first question uh, is obviously how to theorize the open learning model. What we did uh, was just to investigate how papers and articles on this specific topic uh, used one specific theory, which is uh, self-regulation. It goes without saying that self-regulation might not be the only theoretical framework to use. But besides this, the questions that we would also like to put forward specifically concerns uh, the role of theorizing in educational technology. So one question could be, what kind of theories should we look at? How can we overcome the fragmentation that we have reported in our uh, brief uh, and short literature analysis? Can we contribute to the existing plethora of theories uh, by making use either of um, the open learning model or any other educational technology out there? So these are perhaps the questions that we can start with uh, in uh, our uh, conversation. Thank you very much for your attention and uh, hope to see you on the 8th of July. Thank you.